All right, what's going on guys? We are back with another video tonight. Today was a day off the water as it was like the high was like 24 degrees or something ridiculous and uh, we had some video work to catch up on. But, you know, we get a ton of YouTube questions about information, which is great obviously because that's the focus of this channel is hardcore practical information that a lot of you guys can use whether it's specific to how to find fish, uh, what bites are going on, hold up for a whole bunch of different multi-species stuff. Um, and hopefully you guys enjoy the information. And uh, because it's all about information, like I said, we get a ton of questions asked. And whenever I see a question that's just kind of repetitively asked over and over and over by many different people through many different videos, that's generally what we try to do our videos on, right? Um, and a lot of times that has to do with how we're finding fish with side imaging, down imaging, sonar, GPS, all that good stuff. And uh, with spring walleye fishing, pretty much upon us now, um, and, you know, with opening season coming up here soon for Wisconsin and Minnesota and, and most of the Midwest here, um, we get a lot of questions asked about walleye spots in the spring. How do you find walleye spots? I kind of did a video on this um, about side imaging, but the main focus was on side imaging. And one question we kind of specifically get asked over and over is how can you look at a map and break down a lake, right? And we did a YouTube series last year, which was basically we'd go to new lakes we'd never been to and we'd try to catch walleyes there. We kind of break it down, but this video is basically going to be, we're going to be looking at the first stage is going to be, we're looking at the GPS and we're going to kind of go through a couple of different types of systems. One's going to be like your flowage river system type lake. And the other one's going to be more your deep, clear, natural lakes. Um, you know, and, and that should kind of break it up pretty good um, for you guys. But basically this is going to be, like I said, the first step is going to be all about GPS, how you can work with either GPS or just a plate paper map and, uh, um, you know, kind of get on the right track to finding walleyes early in the spring. So we're going to start right into it here. Um, I got one camera rolling on the hummingbird. As you guys can see, you know, a lot of the stuff I'll be talking about will be, um, you know, I might be using the word hummingbird or do this, do that. But think about it if you have a paper map, you know, a lot of the same stuff is going to apply. So right now what we're looking at is actually a flowage system. Now there's a lot of flowage systems throughout the whole state of Wisconsin. And uh, I know a lot of you guys fish them because I get a lot of questions about, asked about them. Um, in my area, I would say I don't fish flowages as much just because the quality of fish is not as good. But they might be great flowages where you guys fish. So in the spring, right, doesn't really matter, um, you know, where you're fishing. It's just generally a shallow water bite in the spring, whether you're in the Dakotas, whether you're in northern Wisconsin, whether you're on Green Bay. These are all shallow water bites this time of year. And that's kind of what makes spring so fun. It's the only time of year for the most part that we can really fish walleyes in these depths. And uh, um, so the first thing I always do, especially if it's a lake that I'm not familiar with, is I like to highlight my shallow water. Now, if you don't have, if you're working with a paper map, just kind of make a verbal note or maybe take a highlighter and shade in everything under five feet, right? And it's going to give you a lot better idea of where these larger flats are. Now, on pretty much whether you're fishing a flowage or a natural lake, 10 feet and less is a lot of times where you're starting in this time of year. So Hummingbird has a great feature called shallow water highlight. Basically what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit menu, menu, and I'm gonna come over here to the hummingbird chart, this is what I want, and I'm gonna come down to shallow water highlight. Now, if I put this to three, it's gonna highlight everything in red three feet and less. If I put it to 10, it's 10 feet and less. So pretty simple idea here. On the flowage, I'm gonna set it to like eight, right? Because um, shallow water is all relative, correct? So if you have, if the basin in your lake is 15 feet, shallow water might be like three, two, and one feet of water in the spring. So if you have a lot of like 60, 90 feet, kind of those real deep, clear lakes, I would say your shallow water is like 12 feet and less. So on the flowage here, there's a lot of like 15, 20, some 30 foot. So I'm going to set this to about eight foot. And you're going to see all the red jumping out here in a second. So now you can see a lot of this red, right? Um, you know, there's obviously like big shallow bays like this here, um, you know, shallow water pockets like this here. But in the flowages, what I really like to look for more than anything else is, and really all year long, and especially in the spring, is some kind of big shallow flat next to an, either an old river channel um, or a deeper line of water, which is generally your old river channels. And well, how we can find that is by kind of starting to cruise around here. And what we're going to start seeing is stuff that looks like this right here. I'll kind of scroll in that so you guys can see it here. So here we have, we have a hump right smack dab in the middle. Here's like an older channel. It's 
like 16, 17 feet kind of all the way through here and it snakes down between these two points. Now, flowages are very unique because they have a ton of characteristic generally for their size. There's points everywhere, there's humps everywhere, there's a lot of up and down and stuff going on. So one thing with the flowage, I love fishing areas that have a lot of complexity to them. A lot of inter interconnected points and humps and stuff like this around river channels. So right here you can see, like we're talking about 16, 17 feet of water, we have a shallow point here, we have a shallow point extension here, we have a shallow hump right here, and we kind of got this other bigger flatter point that runs out. Now this is exactly the kind of stuff I'm looking for. This is actually a spot that I fish a ton um, in the spring, or used to fish in the spring a ton. Um, very productive area for sure. And uh, basically, um, you know, you can kind of replicate this all over the place. So really another kind of thing we're looking for in the spring, um, walleyes love spawning around current. So really anywhere there's an inflow of water is generally going to be an area at least worth looking at. And typically flowages have, if not one, multiple feeder streams or rivers or stuff like that. And it doesn't have to be a big raging river to draw these fish in. Generally the water coming out of these creeks um, is generally a little bit warmer than the rest of the lake and generally where that water comes in is going to be warmer in the lake than it will let's say you know a mile the other direction out in the basin right so a lot of times these walleyes are naturally attracted to these little creeks or rivers and uh, you can see here we actually have a small river coming in right here and then we have a big shoreline flat now this spot's a lot less obvious than you know the last spot the last spot had a lot of interconnected points humps stuff like that but the premise is still the same you can see we got a pretty good flat coming off both these sides here and you kind of lose your flat going down this way and then it's just kind of this this larger bay out here but you know these are the kind of spots i'm looking for and that shallow water highlight does a great job of showing you that so i'll take the shallow water highlight off here or I'll just turn it to three so you guys can kind of get a better idea of, you know, let's say you set this at three. Well, it's not very obvious anymore that there, that this is going to be a good spot, right? Now, if you look at enough maps, there's certain things that always kind of jump out at you. And for me, I'm going to crank this back up um, to like five or six, seven feet, somewhere in there, wherever we had it. All right, so now it's at seven feet. Now, like I was saying, if you look at maps enough, there's always little things that kind of jump out at you. And... Um, for me, it's this right here. You can see there's kind of like this flat shelf, flat shelf, and there's this little knob right here that has a very tight break next to it. These are a lot of times what your sweet spots are gonna be. This is another spot I've fished a lot, caught a bunch of walleyes right here, right? Um, so it's, it's kind of when you get used to reading the map, looking at these kind of sweet spots, and sweet spots are a term I use a lot. Most of the time there might be a big piece of structure, but right on this corner, it, it does one of these, um, or maybe there's bigger rocks over here, better weeds here on this tip. You know, those are the kind of things that are sweet spots generally. And if you have something like this, that is normally the kind of stuff that catches my eye, and that's normally like the first place I'm gonna start fishing, right? So, you know, on flowages, shallow water, you know, set that thing at like eight feet and less, Look for those little sweet spots. Look for your river channels. Look for anywhere there's a river channel with a lot of shallow water flats around it, interconnected points, humps like that, and you guys are going to be much better off. All right, so next we're moving on to natural lakes. Now, the, the primary difference this spring between natural lakes and flowages is a lot of our natural lakes do not have um, inflows or river channels going through them, right? Those river channels and those flowages or river systems are kind of the lifeblood, and <clears throat> it's pretty easy to locate those big flats next to the channel. Now, on a lot of our natural lakes kind of all across northern Wisconsin, northern Minnesota, Michigan, wherever you want to go, um, you're looking for shoreline related structure. Most of the walleyes in these, in these lakes are spawning or relating to that first shoreline piece of structure or that initial piece of structure, right? And the whole shallow water thing still applies. It's always going to be a shallow water bite in the spring for the most part. Um, you can pretty much bet on that every single year. And if a lake like this lake, for example, that we're looking at on sonar right now, or on the GPS, has a lot of deep water, right? So I'm gonna set that shallow water highlight a little bit deeper than I was before. I might crank it out to like 10, right? I'm gonna crank this out. Shallow water highlight. We'll go out to 10 here. A lot of times these deeper natural lakes are much clearer systems, so those fish will kind of naturally sit a little bit deeper in the day and they might kind of move up shallower at night. So. Right the second I set this 10 foot and more red, it's pretty easy to see a lot of the shallow water, right? Now, what I'm not really looking for is like humps way out in the middle of the lake. Don't really care that much about that. I wanna see big shoreline flats um, and then generally some kind of unique characteristic off them. So if I come in on something like this right here, 
what you're going to see is we have kind of this big red flat. Now this is all 8 to 10 feet and less, but I have this one big hook out here, right? That's the sweet spot. That's where I want to start fishing, or at least start driving over side edging to see what's there, right? So pretty easy there. Um, we'll kind of do another example here. I'll just kind of scroll through on something that catches my eye. Here we have another big one, shoreline related point, right? This is a pretty non-interesting bank until you get to this big flat and you can see it's all actually pretty much five feet and less, right? And uh, you know, this is the kind of stuff I'm looking for. This is the kind of stuff where walleye is gonna be early on. They might do their spawning up in here in three feet and they might sit on the outskirts of this sand, gravel, rock, weed, whatever the rest of that spring period, right? So it's pretty obvious um, to kind of get on these spots. Now spots that don't really interest me that much, especially like right away opening weekend, is like these big, very flat bays that look like this, right? If you see a bay that is generally very, very flat that just kind of silts out and keep going, you can almost guarantee that's gonna be a very soft bottom area. It's not that these areas don't hold fish, it's just generally not exactly what I'm looking for in this early, super early season period, right? Now, if you come over here, what you're gonna see is deep water out here and the, this very steep break. Now this tells me a couple of things, and this is coming out of this, this real slacky mud bay probably, is that this with this super steep break, that's gonna be a very hard bottom, right? So I can almost guarantee you, even without driving over this, that this point is either rock, gravel, or sand, right? All those things are good for early season walleyes because it's not muck bottom, it's not gonna be that slop junk weed bottom that was left over from last winter where walleyes don't wanna be in that. I can almost guarantee you this is gonna be the spot that we wanna check out. Pops out to deep water, it's got a good point right there. It's actually got kind of a cool little characteristic right here too. And uh, close to deep water, like I said. So, you know, either if you're looking at a paper map, you can highlight that stuff, you can put a star on it, you can take note of it. This is the kind of structure that I'm looking for um, this time of year. Now, the next thing we're gonna talk about is uh, we're gonna talk about basically when you get to these spots, how you're gonna start looking around either for fish or structure or how you're gonna approach these spots, right? Um, so we're gonna go back to flowages now. We're gonna start there on this. And side imaging is absolutely king in the spring. I've, just, I've talked a lot about side imaging. I've done a lot of side imaging videos. And it, it is the deal in the spring. Really, you can't see fish that are on the bottom in seven feet of water with sonar or down imaging. It just does not work that well. Side imaging gives you the ability to look out to the sides and that's what you're gonna do. So in the flowages, a lot of times we're looking for one of two things, rock or gravel in the spring. If the fish are at all kind of in that spawning cycle, that's normally kind of the deal. And uh, that's super easy to show up on side imaging. Look something like this right here. And uh, <clears throat> the rock patterns normally, fish are, walleyes are relating to rock almost everywhere on that kind of opening weekend time frame, right? It's just kind of the, the place to be. Um, but there are other kind of things that hold fish too. And flowages, one of the other big ones is wood. Anywhere you have a lot of stumps in the water, anywhere you have a lot of down timber in the water is normally a good spot. So that's all that stuff is super easy. It shows up on side imaging very well. A lot of times in the spring, I'm not necessarily looking for fish as much as I am very good structure. You know, you saw us fish a ton in Green Bay and in that scenario, we were looking for fish specifically because we were fishing big sand flats. But if there's a lot of timber down there, if there's a lot of stumps down there, if there's a lot of gravel and rock down there, you're not gonna see all those fish on that spot. You might not see any of them on that spot if that rock's real heavy. So it's kind of using side imaging to figure out where that good structure is once you locate these good spots on the map. Um, and that's basically how you pick apart lakes in the spring, especially you know, flowages, it's super simple. Pick up good flats like that, those big complex hump areas, drive around with your side imaging on, you're looking for good rock that looks like this or down timber that looks something like this. Now much like fish and flowages, on natural clear lakes, it is all about side imaging in the spring, right? The one good thing that we don't have in natural lakes, which makes it a lot easier generally, is a lot of timber in the water. Um, timber makes it very difficult to see fish that are around it when it's very thick stuff. Um, it's either normally sand, gravel, or the fringe weeds that you have down there. All three of those things can hold fish. And uh, you can generally see more fish on side imaging on these natural lakes because of that, because it's either <clears throat> because there is generally more sand on these kind of bodies of water. So normally what I'm looking for is still a lot of the same stuff. I'm looking for good rock up shallow. Now, like I, if I come into one of these major points like this right here, now the first thing I wanna do is flip that side imaging on and I wanna cruise over it kind of in that sweet spot you know, in, that, in those depths that you outlight generally 10 feet and less and uh, see what's there. And a lot of times you're gonna see something that looks like this right here. 
Now this is a rock line, and like you can see right here, the rock kind of fades out. Normally this would kind of be like the outside of that rock edge before it breaks off the tip of these points, humps, or whatever you're kind of fishing. And uh, that's the exact kind of spot where I throw a waypoint down, I come back, spot lock, and I throw my jig in a minnow, jig in plastic, jerk bait, whatever I'm throwing that day up there for walleye. So, um, the ideas are all the same, kind of no matter what body of water you're fishing in, the specifics might change a little bit as far as exactly how to look at a map and find these kind of spots. Um, but spring's all about shallow water and uh, you know, using, looking at that shallow water and then using your side imaging on top, that is a great way to come out and catch fish. Now, if you don't have side imaging, which is a question we get a lot too, how do you find fish if you don't have this kind of stuff? You fish quickly, honestly. You can kind of sort of drive over some of these spots and you know five seven eight nine feet of water and see what it is on sonar You know rocks are going to show up like that obviously sand's going to be real flat weeds You know you're going to be able to tell that they're weeds um, But you just got to kind of fish through that stuff a lot more because you're not going to see it on down imaging or uh, um, Sonar so I'd put on something you can either fish really quick or like a bit like a bigger plastic or a jerk bait or crank bait something you can just kind of buzz through those spots with or what I would do, I would try to find the sweet spot. I would sit right on the tip of the point. I would sit right on the north edge of that hump. I would sit, you know, kind of look at the map wherever that little sweet spot is. I would make my 5, 10 casts there, and if I don't get anything, I would go right to the next one, next one, next one. Um, you know, if you have side imaging, obviously the advantage is a lot of times you can pull up, either see if there's fish there, number one, or identify where fish would be if they're there very quickly, number two, and make those casts. So. Um, yeah, hopefully this video is useful for you guys. Um, we get a ton of questions all over the place on a whole bunch of different stuff, but with spring walleyes on everybody's mind and us getting this question a lot, how do you break down a lake in the spring? Hopefully this was useful to you guys. Um, I appreciate you guys watching. Drop a whole bunch of other comments and stuff you guys want to see. I will be back in a boat fishing tomorrow, so we will get back to fishing um, in a boat content for here on out, but uh, I appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching. If you're not yet, please subscribe and stay tuned for more content.